I thought I'd do a little video to take a look at my uh, Chris Reeve knife collection as it currently stands as of uh, 25 April 2017. Um, I'd started a thread on Blade Forums that kind of showed the, not, my collection of Chris Reeves as it stands and my storage solution in this Pelican case, uh, 1300 size case that I use to store those knives right now. Uh, I use Pelican 1500 cases for my other folding knives. They're a, they're a larger case in the length and uh, uh, width dimensions. Uh, this 1300 case is a little bit taller. It has a larger height. And I'll kind of get into that a little bit later when I talk about the foam inside this case. But basically this video, it's going to be a little bit rambling. I'm just going to kind of talk about this case. Um, and then I'll kind of just take a little short tour of my current Chris Reeve collection and kind of look at some of those knives. Uh, but let's go ahead and open the case and see what we've got in here. So inside of the case here we have, uh, I keep a few of these Chris Reeve knife leather slip sheaths in there. Um, Chris Reeve cloth and as you can see wrapped in there to keep it from banging against my folders I have a Chris Reeve professional soldier and we'll take a look at that in a minute as well as some of the other knives but I just kind of wanted to talk about the case first. So inside this case, uh, it came with the Pelican pick and pluck foam. So you can see all this stuff, it comes from the factory um, perforated. So when you decide how you want to lay out the case and where you want your items to be, whether they be knives or camera gear or whatever the heck you're storing in this case, um, you just, what I do is I typically just kind of run my finger down. And I'll tell you what, let me pull real quick one of the foam pieces. So this, these are the foam pieces right here that come out of these cases. This is the pick and pluck that comes out. So it's just sectioned off into these squares and you can see these actually came out of here. So um, it's a little bit tight to get in there. But basically when you figure out where you want stuff to come out, you'll just kind of run your finger down and wiggle it to break those sections off. And they break pretty easily. Um, you just got to be careful. So like I'll typically hold on to the section I want to stay in place and then wiggle my finger downwards on all four sides or all sides of the section that I want to take out of there. Um, so the way that I laid out the case for my Chris Reeve knives, I, you got to kind of plan this ahead. Uh, figure out how big the slots are for the knives that you want to fit in there, how much space you want in between the knives, and I try and do it so that I can maximize the number of knives or items that I can fit in the case. Uh, for my Chris Reeve collection, I have several smalls, so what I decided to do, I found that a two square by one square section fit a small perfectly. Now also note, I take the pocket clips off all my Chris Reeve knives, so none of these knives have the pocket clip. If it did have a pocket clip, I might want to do a two by two, as I've done with the larges. Um, but for the smalls without the clip, this one by two fits it perfectly. So. Uh, I've got eight one by two slots across the front here where I can store smalls, and then I've got ten two by two sections here, and those fit the large knives pretty well. Uh, you could probably have also done a, uh, a three by one section for the larges, but this worked a little bit better for me because if I had done that, it would have eaten up space back here, and I wanted a pocket to store some other miscellaneous items. So with this configuration, I was able to get room for eight smalls up front and then ten larges. And this fits large 21s, uh, um -num -zon, 25s, I've got uh, regulars, and a large classic even sitting here. And we'll kind of take a look at some of those knives in a minute. But uh, continuing on with the case, uh, you can see right here, these are just disposable desiccant packs. I bought those on Amazon in bulk, really cheap. And in all my Pelican cases for knives, I just slide slide them in, in uh, at least a couple in there. In the small case, I think I've only got the two there. Uh, now I wanted to mention, as I said, this case is taller than the 1500s. Uh, now what that means is the 1500s have one layer of pick and pluck foam in them. And they just happen to be about perfect size for most knives. Um, so you, you pull those out and or pull out your sections that you want to take out. And most knives will fit in there and have enough sticking up where you can pull them out, but everything's kind of protected. With this taller case, there are actually two layers of pick and pluck foam. And from the factory, those layers come up flush with this edge right here. 
uh, that did not work well for me because, or for these Chris Reeve knives, because with it at its factory height, the largest were fine. You could grab them out of there just fine. But as you can see, as I've got it configured, these smalls just stick above the edge. Well, from the factory, the holes swallowed those things up. So what I did is I removed one of the pick and pluck foam layers, and I just took a serrated bread knife and sliced it in half. So that dropped the height down of one of them. And then it, it allowed me to get just enough of those smalls where I could grab them easily and pull them out of the slots. Um, and the uh, larges were still well protected because I originally tried to just remove one of the layers and that left way too much of the larges sticking out for my taste. So that's, uh, that's how I configured the pick and plug foam layers. Uh, now back here I've got another section where I pulled a 2 by 13 square section out back here and that was to just store some miscellaneous items all Chris Reeve related stuff. So you can see I've got a tube of the fluorinated grease, a tube of the Loctite. I don't even use Chris Reeve fluorinated grease. Um, when I grease my Sabenzas, I use a, a lubricant called Slide Glide. I really like that stuff. I use it on my pistols uh, for the slide to frame interface and I just prefer it. I keep this stuff in here just, I don't know, just in case I needed some. Uh, and then the Loctite, I have some open bottles of Loctite. This stuff's kind of just here for like a, um, I don't know, just to have it in there, whatever. Uh, I have a loose clip in there from a, from a knife uh, from one of my, I think it's from a large event, I can't quite remember. I keep a bag of spare umnums on O-rings. When I ordered some Chris Reeve parts, I just ordered several of these O-rings uh, because through experience, I found that you really want to use the factory Chris Reeve O-rings on your umnums on thumb studs. I had some generic number 60s on from the uh, uh, depart or hardware store on this particular room that was on, and it, it actually did affect uh, the lockup of the knife. Uh, I put some factory ones on there, and they worked much better. So I keep some spares in there. These things are pretty cheap, so I just keep a bunch of them in there. And then I've got a bag here with some Chris Reeve tools. You can see I've got some wrenches in there, some of the hex wrenches, and then I've got a couple of the, uh, actually two sets of the Umnums on old style pivot tools, two in the machined aluminum, and two in uh, like a Durlin plastic type of cylinder there. So that is what's going on with this little pocket back here, and all that stuff slips in there pretty nicely. So, I think that pretty much covers uh, what I wanted to talk about in the case. So, you know, it's kind of late. i got a few minutes to kill. Let's go ahead and just kind of go through the knives, take a look at what I've got in here. A little Chris Reeve cloth here. And as you saw, I keep um, the, uh, I think I mentioned I keep the professional soldier. This was just kind of, I had never wanted a professional soldier or, or anything, but I saw this one for a really good price on Blade Forums. And we'll kind of start with this knife. Um, so typically, this is a Chris Reeve Professional Soldier with the drop point blade. Um, I'd never had any interest in this, but I this was on uh, Blade Forums on the exchange for sale for a really good price. It was $137, and it came with these customized, um, I think they're English walnut scales that have been professionally stabilized and oiled and contoured to the knife. Um, just I just I loved the look. I thought this was a really, really beautiful knife. Uh, I thought the price was right, uh, so I picked it up, you know, just kind of on a whim, and I, I don't regret it. It's a really cool knife. Um, the handle on it, I have medium-sized hands, and you can see that the handle um, is a little, it feels a little bit small, especially given the length of the blade, but it's okay. I mean, it is comfortable. It just, I, I think that if I had, if I could, I'd probably put another half inch or so on there so that I could get a full four-finger grip. If I grip it in like a hammer grip, you can get it. But uh, saber-type grip, uh, this is how that handle fits in there. But it's okay. Uh, it's, it's a neat little knife. I like it, and I definitely am glad that I picked that guy up with those really nice wood scales on there. Very nice little knife. And the, uh, the guy who did the scales, I assume modified this factory sheath to accept the scales. And when I first bought it, I was a little bit worried that the uh, the uh, Kydex or whatever plastic they use for the sheath, I was a little bit worried that it was going to rub on these wood scales and kind of mar them over time. 
But it, the sheath is actually set up really well where it, it really just rides on this front fastener, which sticks up above these scales a little bit. So that's really the place where you're getting friction on the sheath, and it's not really rubbing on the wood scales. So that's nice. And let's just take a look at this next to a large 21 real quick. So you can kind of get just a, so you can see a large 21 really kind of, Kind of dwarfs that thing, doesn't it? A little, it's a little fixed blade. Just to give you an idea if maybe you were had a 21 or, and we're looking at a professional soldier or vice versa, you know what you're looking at. And let's pull out a small Sabenza. Take a look at that guy too. You can see. All right. So let's just kind of go down the line, take a look at a few of these things. I want to get the case out of the way um, and talk about that first. So if you don't want to go through this whole, you know, little show and tell on the Sabenzas, you don't have to, or the Chris Reeve knives, you know, whatever. So we'll start right here for the folders. This is uh, my latest Chris Reeve acquisition. This is a small and cozy. Uh, all of these knives, by the way, except for a very few. I actually, I think there's maybe only one in my collection now that I did not pick up off the Blade Forums Exchange. That's where I bought all these, um, and there, there's some really great people to deal with on the Blade Forums Exchange. So this is small and cozy I got on there. This is one of the earlier ones that has the groove on the on the blade here to engage the ceramic ball interface. So there's a little ceramic ball on that lock bar on Incozy's, uh, Sabenza 25s, and Umimzons. And that's what provides your detent. You can see it click down there into the detent hole in the blade, the ceramic ball did. And then that ceramic ball will also engage in that groove on the back of the tang. So when the knife is open, the ball slides into that groove. They did away with that on the Incozy's. Um, at some point, I don't know at one point in the production, they went away from it. I think it was about mid-2016 when they did or so. But this is a really neat little knife. Uh, I like it. Like I said, I've got medium-sized hands. You can see uh, I get a, in a saber grip, I get like a three-and-a-half finger grip. Really a three, yeah, three and, and a, a quarter or something, I don't know, <laughs> with the pinky kind of hanging off the back there. But that's okay. It, it feels nice. Um, I really like the the shape and everything of it. And I, I'll tell you right now, when I first looked at this knife, I wasn't terribly interested in it because this looked like it was going to be very uncomfortable with this little nub here. And I'll tell you what, you really don't notice that. Um, at least for my hands, I don't. And you'll see the meat of your finger here really follows the larger contour of this curve here. So it doesn't, you don't really notice this as a nub. Your finger just kind of goes into this larger curve. See how that happens? And it's, it is comfortable. And it, I was surprised by that when I got the knife. I kind of bought this one on a whim because, I don't know, I saw it and I was like, you know, I really need to try an Incozy. I haven't tried a large or a small. Uh, and I wanted to try one. And I wanted, if I was going to have one, I wanted one with the earlier groove just because it's something different that they don't make anymore. I like having knives that they don't make anymore or with features that they don't make anymore. So that's a small Incozy. Neat little knife. Um, I will note, so I, I told you I take the pocket clips off all my, my uh, Chris Reeves, and I hadn't bought a Chris Reeve in a while. Uh, it had been a couple months, I think. And I, I'd already known with the Umum Zons and the 25s and um, 21s that I didn't like the clips on there. When I got this in Cozy, I messed with it for a couple days with the clip on there. I'm like, man, I just, uh, I'm not really digging the ergonomics of this knife. It just doesn't feel great to me. And then I was like, well, I better take the clip off there like I did on my others, and bam, feels great. Uh, and I find that for some reason with my Chris Reeves more than any other knife that I have, the pocket clip really seems to make it feel better. And you'll get hot spots from pocket clips on all kinds of knives, Spyderco, Benchmade, the Zero Tolerance, all those. Uh, but for some reason, the, the ergonomics on the Chris Reeves to me are really improved by removing the pocket clip. So I remove them and then I carry them in like an EDC bag or a jacket pocket in these or in a, like a nylon, a very uh, nondescript black nylon belt sheath is what uh, my, my folders will write in. So that's how I carry my, the, the Chris Reeve knives that I do carry, such as the Incozy, uh, this Starbenza Large 21, 
my 25 here. This um is on sometimes gets carried. But anyway, let's continue on down the line. I'm rambling on here. i got to speed this up. i got a few knives to get through here. This is a really cool one. This one just came back from factory service. Uh, I got it back, I think, last week. Um, and what I, all I had them do to this was put double thumb studs on this knife. I love the double thumb studs. I think the Chris Reeves should come with them from the factory. The Encozis do. Um, obviously, the Um Noomzons do because those thumb studs are also your stop pins, so you got to have two of them. Uh, but the 21s do not, and I think they should. Some of them do, but most of them, like the base models, do not. And how I open my almost all my folders, my thumb stud folders, I typically pinch the thumb studs, whether it's a Benchmade or whatever, and I'll kind of open it with the Chris Reeves. I pinch them, open them like that, and then I'll finish it with the one thumb stud. But I pinch, and I, what that's really nice, how I find that to be really nice is, if you have an issue where you're new to frame locks or something, sometimes you have a tendency to put your finger on there. Now I've got enough frame locks, I've been messing with them long enough, I don't do that and apply pressure, which will make it then difficult to open the knife. Well, if you have double thumb studs there, pinch that guy on either side, and it keeps you from putting pressure on that lock bar with this finger. But anyway, I like the double thumb studs. Uh, I actually sent four knives back to Chris Reeves at the time, and it was these two that I sent back solely to have double thumb studs installed on them, because these are two of the Chris Reeves that I do carry. Uh, this one especially uh, sees a lot of carry. This is just a 2010 small 21, just a plain Jane, about as plain as a Chris Reeve knife gets these days. Uh, very plain, because this is a 2010 model without the Idaho Made stamp. So they, they started doing that sometime in late 2010 or in 2011. They started putting Idaho Made on these. Uh, this was made just before they started doing that. So great little EDC knife um, for plain 21 there. Double thumb studs really have made me enjoy it even more. And you can see these are new studs. Look at that beautiful blue. And I like the blue. I like the blue anodizing. I even like it when it wears. I, I don't know why. I just I do. And I think this carbon fiber looks really great with the blue accents. Now this is a carbon fiber in Singo small carbon fiber inlaid a Blade HQ exclusive. Now you're probably looking at this knife thinking that looks really weird. Well this is a custom machine carbon fiber backspacer. So you probably noticed that it's not on most Chris Reeve knives or any unless you get them from a fellow on Blade Forums. I believe his handle is Boomer52. So I got that from him. A beautiful beautiful piece of work and I think it really really complements this knife. Uh, I think it just completes it and makes a gorgeous package. Uh, he is supposed to be making some in micarta I think he said in June or I'm sorry in July I believe is what he said and I will be picking those up for my two small classic micarta inlays that we'll take a look at here in a second. Um, but yeah just beautiful beautiful work and uh, when I first got this I was a little bit concerned um, that Chris Reeves are built to such tolerances that I was afraid, well, you know, what if this is just a little bit too thick and it doesn't allow, you know, the, the uh, knife to go back together the way that it should? Am I going to have any blade play or anything? And it didn't. It fit perfectly. It doesn't move. It didn't hinder um, any uh, reassembly of the knife. It was just awesome. And uh, it does not, like I said, it doesn't move at all. Uh, he only makes these for the smalls currently, and the reason for that is the smalls have a stepped lanyard pin. So the lanyard pin, as you can, you know what? I don't have any knives right now that don't have a lanyard but have the pin in there. The lanyard pin will stay in a small because it's stepped uh, and has a shoulder. So once the scales are back together, they they uh, keep that lanyard pin in place. The largest don't. It's just a straight cylinder. So if the lanyard's not there, it slips right out of the handle. There's nothing to hold it in. So there you go with a carbon fiber Blade HQ exclusive. Beautiful knife. I really, really like that knife. So anyway, we already took a look at this 2010 plane. I'm not going to pull that back out. We got here. We'll take a look at both of these at once. These are just uh, a couple of classic, small classic micarta inlay knives. I do sometimes carry this one. Um, it's, it's just both of these have been used. This one has a little more wear on it than this one does, so I, I carry this one sometimes. I love these classics. I think the classics might be my favorite Chris Reeve version of the knife uh, for a couple reasons. I think this classic MM, I just I love the way that looks on there. I don't know why. I just think it looks cool. Um, there were some extra little details. And I go, you know what? I go over 
some differences on the classic. I'll put a link to that video because um, I don't want to get back into all that here. This video is going to be long enough. But um, so, yep, just a couple of small classics there. I got pretty good deals on these on the Blade Forms Exchange. That's why I have two of them. And it's just, you know, you don't, these are not knives that come up for sale terribly often. So I snagged them when I could. Next one down the line here. This is a uh, Nika, Nika. I cannot, you know, I cannot remember what that stands for. You know, I have to Google that. Um, limited to 400 production on this knife. Um, this is a regular. This is a Chris Reeves small regular. So as you can see, that's a uh, dramatically different handle shape than the 21 or classic. Classic and 21 are pretty much the same handle shape. Um, but you can see that regular is quite a bit different than the 21. They no longer make the regular. I think maybe they still do some annuals in the regular handle shape or something. I, and don't, don't hold me to that. I don't know if they still do that or not. But I picked this one up on Blade Forms also for a pretty good price. I uh, just wanted to, this is the first regular that I'd ever picked up. And I just wanted to kind of try one out. I never, I never messed with one. So you can see this has the Tanto style blade. And this one will segue right into another one I picked up off of the Blade Forms. I should just stop saying that because I believe all of these were picked up on there. So we'll just leave it at that. So here is the large version of this knife. Pretty neat. Uh, you can see there's a difference in the finish on here. Somebody did the scotch Bright finish on this at one time. Uh, just kind of took a scotch Bright pad and ran along here to smooth out that bead blasting. To be honest with you, I really like the way this looks. I think the contrast with the uh, machine or the CNC uh, portions on the knife, I think that it looks really good. I did send this one back in. This was one of the four that I sent in for factory service that I got back last week. Um, and I did request them to do a spa treatment on this. And the only reason was I wanted it to match my small version. Uh, the factory said they would not, they, they did do factory service on it where it had a little bit of side to side play. They fixed that and mechanically they did the spa treatment on this knife. Cosmetically, they said they would not refinish this because it had been modified outside the factory. Um, so I've seen reports say, you know, some people say that they will, some won't. And I think it's on a case by case basis uh, based on what has been done to the knife. I don't care about that. It's not a big deal to me because, like I said, I like the way it looked. Um, I just wanted it to match the small, but they didn't do it, and that's fine. I uh, still really like that knife. No plans to get rid of, well, any of these Chris Reeve knives. On down the line here, we have the large micarta inlay version of the classic let's see classic mm then we'll pull one of the smalls back out here real quick to look at those two beauties next to each other a little bit a little bit of light on them not much to really say about that just gotta take a look at it Next one we've got here is one of my favorites. This was the fourth one that I sent in. This had a full spa treatment done to it. Um, they bead blasted it, they sharpened it, tuned it. Um, some other specific requests, or a specific request I had with this one was uh, I had dual thumb studs installed on it, obviously. And the lock bar on this one, the tension on this lock bar was a little bit weak. It was concerning to me. Uh, it, it just didn't give much resistance when I went to disengage it to close the blade and I was it always just felt like I was going to push it over too far and I didn't like that and also when I disassembled this knife this is the only Chris Reeve knife I own where when I disassembled it the lock bar did not when the so how I disassemble my Chris Reeve knives is I, I take out the pivot first remove the blade and the washers with the pivot bushing and when you do that on all the other Chris Reeve knives I've owned the folders this lock bar will come over and touch, you want to ease it over there, but it will come over and touch this opposite handle slab. That did not happen with this knife, and it, I just didn't like it. I didn't like that this one in my collection didn't do that. So I told them about that, and they fixed it. They, they um, adjusted the lock bar tension. Now it does come over and touch there. Uh, they also said that they re-hardened the face on this lock bar. But this is a large 21 Micarta inlay in Singo. Awesome. Look at that. Just a beautiful knife. Um, and this Chris Reeve folder is also unique in my collection because it is the only one, since it was spa finished, 
not having a pocket clip on there is the only one that does not have a rash on the lock bar from the pocket clip as you open and close it. Uh, I, I don't mind snail trails and stuff on the Chris Reeves that I carry. The next one in line here, you'll see my Starbenza 21. Uh, you can see there's all kinds of snail trails and stuff on the titanium, and I don't mind that. I think it looks cool, especially on the Starbenza. But I never, I hate this because it doesn't match. It, it doesn't, it stands out because it's not random. You know what I mean? Uh, and I just don't like having it on there. So I was really excited to get this one back and not have that rash from the, uh, from the pocket clip right in there. So, yeah, beautiful in Sengo. I really, really like this. Love this blade shape on here. Great knife. And speaking of Insengo blades, let me step back here to this guy for just a second. So I had a large version of this knife with the drop point blade. I really liked that knife. The one thing I did not like about it is that it had the polished blade. And I'm not a fan of the polished cursory blades. They show fingerprints real easily. There's just something about them. I, I just don't care for them. It's just personal preference. Now, the great thing about this knife is all, all of the, uh, except for the micarta inlays, all the Chris Reeve knives with inlays, whether they be carbon fiber or wood, have like a polished blade, at least for the 21s. I haven't owned it in, in, in Cozy like that, so I can't really say. But uh, for the 21s, if it has inlays that are not micarta, the blade is polished, except for the Insingo blade. They don't make a polished Insingo blade. They're all stone washed. And the reason for that, I think, is that the Insingo blade is already a little thinner than the uh, Drop Point 21, so the polishing process thins it out more, and they don't do that on the Insingo because it's already thinner. I believe that's the reasoning behind that. If I'm incorrect, feel free to com or comment and, and correct me on that. So anyway, moving back along down the line here, we're approaching 30 minutes on this sucker. So here, we already pulled this one out a little bit. This is one of my users, actually probably the most used that I have. Uh, this is a large 21, the Wilson Combat Star Benza version. Uh, some people don't like this pattern on here. I do. I think it looks really cool. So I bought this one used. It had been pretty well used. Um, blade has been sharpened. There's even a few little imperfections on the edge. Uh, you can see right, right in there. So this is a user for me. And I like this knife. I've actually... I, I tried to downsize my Chris Reeve collection a little bit, and this, when I try and do that, which I'm never very successful at, um, this one always comes up. I'm like, you know, uh, I have this large 21, this Insingo Micarta I really like, and I'm going to start carrying that again. Uh, so maybe I'll sell this one. And I always go to take photos of it to put it up for sale, and I never do. I'm like, I, I just can't do it. Nope, keeping it. So, really neat knife there. All right, made it to the back row. And we'll come up here and start in this back row. This is a neat one. This is a really cool one. I like having this one in my collection. This is the lone knife in here that I did not get from the Blade Forum Exchange. I actually ran across this guy for a pretty darn good price on Sig Forum. Uh, much lower than, than what this would have gone for on, on the Blade Forums Exchange. So I snagged this one up. This is a a large regular Sabenza. Uh, you can see it's seen some use. There are some marks on it. A uh, little mark here, but nothing significant um, that really detracts from this knife. The edge on it is nice. There's no like rolls or dings or anything on it. I solely bought this because it was a good price. I wanted it for my collection. I'm not going to carry this guy, uh, but this is a large regular with a standard drop point blade, and you can see that its blade shape is more bull nosish, we'll say, than say maybe the 21 blade. Kind of give you a comparison there. And we'll also, let me just real quick, like we'll pull a Savenza 25 out here. Take a look at that guy. I would say the 25 is actually a closer blade shape. Than, uh, than the 21 to this regular, so, yeah, like, like having this regular in my collection, so, anyway, so, let me make a quick note here, just, just, just some stuff that pops into my head as I'm doing this, so, I've got three regulars here, and you can kind of see, I, I purposely did that in the case line, my three regulars up there on the end, all three of these regulars have some lock stick, I, 
I, well, let me call it gummy. It's a gummy feeling when they disengage. And you can kind of hear it. Let's see how you can hear that lock stick. It has a little bit of a gummy feeling. I'm not sure why that's the case. That guy is probably the worst. It's weird because that one just came back from spa treatment too. Um, but those regulars, for some reason, have a little bit of a sticky, gummy feeling. Don't care. These really aren't users for me. They're just collection pieces. But just something to note about those regulars in my experience with them. So now we'll move along to one that we really haven't looked at. My Um Noom Zon. Love the look of these Um Noom Zons with the old pivot. I have zero interest in the newer Um Noom Zons. They have the pivot like the Sabenza 25. I just... I don't like them. They just, this knife to me needs this pivot and it's purely aesthetic. I just, I think it looks great on this knife. So go ahead and pop the blade out there on this guy. That is just, that's just a great looking knife. Um, this adds a style, a very unique look. You just don't see that. Uh, the downside of that, as you saw back here, you do need a unique tool to uh, engage that pivot. You can make something if you wanted to take a couple nails and put them into something. You can make a tool on your own, but uh, for the price of these knives, nope. I was very excited to see, if you didn't know, um, those aluminum Umnum Zon tools just recently became available uh, for sale on the Chris Reeve website. There's a, one of the guys on Blade Forums manufactures those for Chris Reeve, uh, B. Hyde. I think he's one of the moderators on the uh, Chris Reeve subforum on the Blade Forums Exchange. Um, but I, I'm pretty sure that he's making those, and those are now for sale. So if you have an old Um Nooms on and you didn't have the tool for it, they're 25 bucks a piece, but they're a little beautifully machined out of aluminum. Go pick one up. They, they are worth having. Um, you know, you've got a nice knife. Have a nice place for them to live. Get the correct tools for them that are nice. You know, don't, don't skimp on the little stuff like that. So, yeah. And this one's kind of cool because this is, uh, this is a 2010 Um Nooms on. And this also, you'll notice, does not have the Idaho Made stamp on it. Uh, this was before they started stamping them with that. And I'm going to do a video of these two Um Noom Zons at some point. So this one is a little, this is kind of a cool Um Noom Zon too. It's a little bit of a transitional one. Um, so you can see it still has the old pivot, but it has the over-travel stop. Um, I don't, th I, you don't see this one terribly often. It has the old pivot and the over travel stop. So I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, let me, I'll just real quick, I'll kind of talk about the differences between these. So um, you can see it has the over travel stop and that's because for some reason, I guess people were, th this was difficult to disengage and so people would take it apart and like bend that lock bar out to make the tension less. So they put this on there, and that's a story that I've read anyway. They put this on there, Chris Reeve did, to keep people from doing that. And you don't see that on the other Chris Reeve knives. Um, but anyway, this one is more difficult to engage, the original design. And I'm going to kind of hold these up here. Now you'll notice that this lock bar does not stick up very far above the opposite side of the handle. It's kind of difficult to, to grab it. you got to kind of wrap your thumb down in there to get some meat, some flesh in there to disengage that. This one, the flange sticks up further, it's much easier to disengage. So that's a welcome addition to me on that one. Um, and that's really the big difference on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy up. Uh, this one, kind of keep him out for a second, take a look at him again. Gorgeous knife. I think this is a, I think this guy was made in 2012. Now you'll also notice, I'm gonna pull this guy out, like, oh, I forgot to mention something about it. Um, you'll notice that there's a finish difference on these. Uh, somebody did the scotch bright on here, just like they had done on this regular. And I love, this is one of the reasons I bought this knife, apart from it being the unique uh, kind of transitional model with uh, the old pivot and the over travel stop. Um, this looks great, I think, but man, I really love this satin look of the titanium with the bead blast look of the uh, machine portions in there. I love the look. I just think it looks great. And then the bead blasted pocket clip for some contrast. Or I love contrast, if I can get it on the look of a knife. So nice looking little Um Noom Zon, at least to me it is. Guy is definitely not for sale. Last two knives here. These are Sabenza 25s. This plain 25 is one of the first Chris Reeve knives that I got. 
I th- I actually, I think it was the second Chris Reed, maybe the third. I may have gotten this one first. The, these two were either the second or third. My first one was a small Plane 21 that I no longer own. Anyway, this is probably my most carried, most used Chris Reed knife. So Benza 25. They only made this in a large size. They did not make it in a small. You can see the Incozy would kind of be a 25 small, but really what happened is they had the Incozy. So you have the, the Savenza 25, came out with the Incozy, which is a smaller kind of version of it. There are some differences between them, I'm not going to get into that. There's videos about that. Uh, but what they did, they discontinued the Savenza 25, and they released the large Incozy, which is kind of a Savenza 25 replacement. So this guy, though, as much as I love the pivot bushings on these other, well, not the Unbumzons, they don't have it, uh, on these Sabenzas, this one does not have that, but it just, it works so well for me. The action on this knife is beautiful, it's well used, and it's just, I love it. I love the giant ceramic ball detent and lock bar interface. This, by the way, does not have a groove on it. You see there's a little bit of a groove in there. That's just because of wear from the ceramic um, ceramic ball, though, that was not put in there from the factory. So this knife, though, I, I mess with it all the time. For, for my medium-sized hands, this 25 just, it's a dream. My fingers fit into these grooves just perfectly. It just, it feels like this knife was, was sculpted for my hand, and I love that. I like the jimping up here. It feels great. Uh, it comes from the factory. It came from the factory with double thumb studs. Um, now, you will have to use some Loctite. I did use a little bit of Loctite in here to keep the pivot where I wanted it, but it's just this 25. Love it. And you can see there's plenty of wear on there, wear down here. It's uh, I use this one quite a bit. I fondle this one quite a bit. It's just a cool knife. Really am a fan of the Sabenza 25. And this is the one that I carry a lot. Now, as much as I love this Sabenza 25, the plane, this guy right here, this is a Micarta Inlay Sabenza 25. As good as this one feels, the one with the Micarta Inlays takes it up a level. And for my hands, just perfect. It, I don't know how to explain it. It almost feels like there's not a knife in my hand. When I hold this thing, it just it feels perfect. Um, the only reason I don't carry this one currently is because I have this one and it's already got quite a bit of wear. There's a lot of uh, I don't know if it showed up well in the with the lighting on it. Hear, hear that thwack when that thing's open. I love that thwack. That again. Ah, I just love that. Um, just inspires confidence. Uh, you can't really see there's there's some pretty significant scratches on this blade and stuff. Yeah, you can see one there. But that's why I carry and use this one, because it's it's seen a lot of use, and I don't mind if it gets some scratches and stuff on it. Eventually, I'm sure that this guy will make it into the into the rotation of carry, but, uh, and you, I bought it used, and you can see there's some, there is some wear on it, but nothing like that plane has. Uh, but this guy with the micarta inlays, and I know a lot of people don't like the look of the inlays on the 25 or in Cozy, they're kind of, I don't know, random looking. I like them, um, but the ergonomics on this for me are just awesome so there you go little trip through the collection of chris reeve knives um, if you made it this far thanks for watching the video even if you just watched the portion about the uh, pelican case you know thanks for watching i hope you've got some information out of this i've got several other chris reeve videos that go like into maintenance and decon or taking them apart and that kind of stuff um, and like i said i'll do some others i'm gonna probably do a little more in-depth on, on comparing those, or maybe not. I guess I kind of went over it there, but uh, maybe something where you don't have to go through a 40-minute video to get the information <laughs> or whatever. So, all right, there you go. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them, um, and I'll try and answer any questions that you may have. Thanks for watching.